you know, this is our, this game time for me. It's always kind of raw. But I'm just hoping that you guys just do right this tax year. Please don't try to scam to get the child tax credit and to earn income credit and do nothing extra. Y'all didn't got yourselves into enough mess <laughs> these last few years. We do not need to add on to any more mess, okay? Um, Stacy said F E F federal employer identification number. I don't understand what you mean. In a year or so, those numbers are going to be staggering. Yes, they're going to be staggering. This is just the beginning, guys. They're going to keep extending the statute of limitations too. I have to jump off. Have a good evening. Thank you for your knowledge and sharing. You're welcome, Stacy. I appreciate you. Okay, guys. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to that Instagram post. OK, because a lot of people will be thinking I come on here and I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. But guys, let me be very honest. I don't do nothing but speak the truth. Um, I'm just not that person. Um, um, I'm not understanding. Something is weird. I can't even see my comments. OK, there we go. Okay, so I'm about to share my screen really quick, and we're about to go over some of these comments um, on my post and some of these questions that's on my post um, that I shared, okay? And guys, just so y'all know, today's the first day that I've been able to stay up. I've been jet lagged um, forever since I came back from Nigeria. I have not been able to stay up since seven past 7 o'clock. So one person said, um, if you paid it back, you'll be all right. Nope, that is not true, guys. Even if you pay back the um, PPP, um, you fraudulently completed the paperwork. You fraudulently um, misrepresented your business on the tax documents um, and everything. So Tommy said, the crooks are the ones that say you don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Look, what I know I connect the dots, guys. My brain, I wish y'all could see sometimes in my brain, that thing be moving, y'all. Like, I can literally analyze everything in seconds. Like, numbers, connections, patterns, trends, I see it quickly. Um, so, no, it's not true, guys. Even if you ended up paying it back, um, you falsified the paperwork to get the loan, okay? All right, so one of the next questions was, Somebody else said that they paid it back, um, they will be okay. Now, if it was forgiven and you're still paying on it, you most definitely have a problem. That's not true. Even if the application was forgiven, even if the loan was forgiven, even if you paid back the loan, you falsified the paperwork. See, guys, when you complete federal paperwork, and let me show you what I mean. It says that every federal document has a disclaimer at the bottom. Give me one second. P I had a disclaimer at the bottom. Okay. Um, and the moment when I say, when it says perjury and all of that stuff, they ask you, are you being honest? And you agree um, to it when you sign and when you submit your application. So the moment um, that you guys put that information on the paperwork and it's wrong, you're done. What I was trying to do was find the application. Let me see if I found one. Let me see, let me see. You know, we haven't accessed this stuff in a long time. Okay, I'm gonna read it to you guys, okay. All right, see, you guys are getting this live in color, guys. Live and live and live and in color. Yes. Okay, so let me share my screen. Um, hold on, guys. Let me. Oh, I thought I could add on um more stuff like different tabs okay hold on share my screen okay so right now we're looking at a ppp application so you guys can see what i was referring to when i said that the moment that you guys completed the application fraudulent i mean the application 
um, with the intent to fraud is where the jail time. It's not about the amount necessarily. Now, the lower the amount, you might get probation. You understand? You might get, you know, you might. Now, don't take my word for it. You might. But if they consider it the normal time frame for committing wire fraud, this fraud, all of this stuff, then we have an issue. It says, by signing below, you make the following representations. That's key. Authorizations and certifications. I certify. So by you guys completing that first round and second round of that PP, PPP and EIDL, you certify that you have read the statements included in this form, including the statements required by law and executive orders, and I understand them. The applicant is eligible. So you certify that the applicant is eligible to receive a loan under the rules in effect at the time this application is submitted that have been issued by the Small Business Administration and the Department of Treasury implementing the PPP program under Division A, Title I of the Coronavirus A Relief and Economic Securities Act. The next one says, you certify that the applicant together with its affiliates, one, is an independent contractor, self-employed individual, or sole proprietor with no employees. Two, if not a housing cooperator, cooperative, eligible 501c6, so you are certifying that you literally were self-employed, a sole proprietor, independent contractor, okay? You also certify that you will comply whenever applicable with the civil rights and other information in this form. You certify that all loan proceeds will be used only for business-related purposes as specified in the loan application and consistent with the PPP program rules, including the prohibition on using loan proceeds for lobbying activities and expenditures. If applicant is a news organization that became eligible for a loan under Section 317 of the Economic da -da -da -da, Nonprofits, da -da 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 -da, okay, uh, will be used to support expenses at the component of the business concern that produces or distributes locally focused emergency information. So even depending on your structure, type of business that you had depends on the loan. You understand that the SBA encourages the purchase to the extent feasible of American-made equipment and products. The applicant is not engaged in any activity that is illegal under federal or state law. Any EIDL loan received by the applicant of the small business between January 31st, 2020 and April 30th, 2020 was for a purpose other than paying payroll costs and other allowable uses. And so the, the, um, the list goes on. I further certify that the information provided in this application and the information provided in all supporting documents and forms is true and accurate. In all matter, in, in all material respects, I understand that knowingly making a false statement to obtain a guaranteed loan from SBA is punishable under the law, including under 18 United States Code 1001 and 3571 by imprisonment of not more than five years and or a fine of up to $250,000. Under 15 United States Code 645 by imprisonment of not more than two years and or a fine of not more than 5000 And if submitted to a federally insured institution under 18 United States Code 1014 by imprisonment of not more than 30 years and or a fine of not more than $1 million. So if you submitted that paperwork to a federally insured institution, so that's the banks that have the FDIC, then um, under imprisonment of not more than 30 years. I acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using required documents submitted. I understand, acknowledge, and agree that the lender can share any tax information See, this is how they got you guys. Any, they didn't even specify years. Any tax information that I have provided with SBA's authorized representatives, including authorized representatives of the SBA Office of Inspector General, for the purpose of compliance with the SBA loan program requirements and all SBA reviews. So 
So now you guys see it, the application in itself. You see that? I read this to you guys too. I, I, I told you that the, I, the SBA can ask you for your financial information on a whim the moment you guys got the loans. So Tommy says, you committed a crime when you submitted the documents, even if you got denied. Yes, yes. Tommy said, y'all knew y'all was lying before y'all collect click the agree button. <laughs> Tommy also said, hold on. You what else? Uh, Chandra said, laugh out loud. They knew they were crooked. <laughs> oh, they said only only thing that was true was the lie. Y'all killed me today. American Greed gonna have a lot of episodes. <laughs> American Greed, PPP. They need to have me as their spokesperson. Like literally a work and green PPP, heavy as this spokesperson. Um, but yeah, guys. So let me go back. Um, so you guys, now are we on the same page when I say that this can lead to criminal time? Do y'all understand? This is see, just for all of my newcomers and for all of you that's new to me, I will always read you the laws, the documents, the real deal. I've been doing this since 2014. I just stopped because y'all was falling prey to the scammers and stuff. Y'all thought when people show y'all they they flashy life that that's the life. Y'all was like, fuck Falasha Day. She don't know. Y'all ain't Falasha Day ain't rich. Y'all was, that's what y'all was saying, right? I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I want you to be straight. Now y'all seeing what I was trying to protect you guys from. And all of them, if you realize, a lot of them people are not online anymore, y'all. Have y'all noticed that all of these coaches and stuff that had y'all scamming and spamming and doing crooking and cooking, um, they're not nowhere to be found. A lot of them are going to jail quietly. And then a lot of them are, their businesses are closing, closing. They're going back to nine to fives. And a lot of them are leaving the country. Have y'all not peeped that? Like y'all wouldn't even believe it, you know. We getting the emails from people want us to do their tax. Oh, we in in Costa Rica, we in Africa now, and we here now. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, guys, it's an absolute mess. So let me go back to the Instagram post. Um, really quick and go back to some of the questions, and then we got to tap out because I got to put my babies down. It's past their bedtime, and I've officially stayed up for. Since I've been back, so I'm happy I can kind of put them down the right way. Um, so somebody on Instagram says, Woo, that's why I kept my hands. Okay, no, that's not a question. And somebody said, Are they going to go after the Chinese and other foreign companies? I don't think they're going specifically based on race, guys. It's more is data. All of this is data driven. Can we can we stop putting um race into everything and hold ourselves accountable? Because it's not <clears throat> a race thing if the chinese company ended up falsifying information to get the ppp they fall right into it now if somebody want to push their applications to the side because they're chinese based and that's a whole nother ball game but if they committed the scam and committed the fraud then they need to be held accountable just like everybody else so chandra said Y'all can read the entire cases. They have everything from the text messages to the DMs. Oh, they got all of the tea. People think they got, they got they're going to get away with it. And social media is telling them folks too. Yes, social media is telling them folks. And that's another thing that I warned you guys about. It was just don't be so boastful because your friends were snitching on people. Literally. So somebody said on Instagram, the PPP loan thing was a setup. No, nope, I think that the people that was, I don't think it was a setup. I think that the people were waiting, that was waiting for their quick opportunity, they get rich quick or for that one time fix or flip or whatever, they took advantage. It was like, oh, I missed out on the, the mortgage, um, the loan crisis. Because um, remember guys, in 2008, 2005, 2006, 7, 8, and 9. Remember, the housing market was booming. Everybody was getting um, no doc loans, flipping real estate. And guys, I even had um, clients that were doing things on the other side. I didn't know that they were, because I will be managing one of their businesses, doing their accounting for it. And that one was fully legit. 
and come to find out they was doing mortgage fraud. I even had people um, close to me, like colleagues that went to jail for five and 10 years for it. So I saw people go down um, during the real estate boom crisis. I ended up letting go my real estate license because I didn't want my clients to buy during that time. And people were hard headed, still trying to buy. And so I let go my real estate license during that time because I'm like, I don't want my name to be associated with people losing their homes. I'm telling people don't buy. The market is going to crash. So I've always been predicting things, guys. When the real estate market crashed in 2009, I wasn't online because we didn't have live stream, but I predicted if I bring you any of my clients that were my real estate clients, they will tell you, Falash, they knew it was coming. Falash, they said it was coming two years before it came. I've always been a predictor. I've always been very analytical about the business, this this economics business, all of this stuff. So me predicting this PPP, EIDL, the tax games, coming up with tax strategies and people stealing it like their own and all that, that's always been in my blood, y'all. It's always been. I predicted the housing crash in 2008, 2009. I predicted this PPP. It's nothing new. Um, and I even have my old real estate signs in my in my shed, if y'all don't believe, honey. Okay. And I used to be an insurance broker. Um, so yeah, I've been around. I didn't I, that's why I know so much, guys. Not because I just did taxes. I've been in the game. Like I've seen it all. And I've always what I say, stand it on business. You're not gonna catch me up. You're not gonna have me doing dirt. I always try to do everything the right way, guys. And the people that took shortcuts, they're nowhere to be found. Their businesses aren't successful. They are running from the IRS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So somebody said, damn, even if you pay it back. Yep. Somebody said, this is going to have so many people in a situation. They may have become ineligible to receive any future and federal benefits. So yes, you guys may become ineligible for any um, future federal benefits and also state benefits as well, because a lot of state programs are federally funded. And so if you have a federal uh, felony, then you're ineligible for a lot of federal funding. And if um, the state gets funding from the federal for that program, you will also be ineligible for it as well. So any of you that qualify for unemployment, TANF, um, health insurance, um, housing, all of that can be suspended or taken away due to you taking this PPP loan and all of those things, okay? Somebody said, this is what happens when you mess with the government. It, it exactly is. Somebody said, I think it's hilarious that people think because it was paid back, that absorbs the crime that was committed. Have, no, have none of y'all heard of restitution? People are forced to pay restitution all the time while serving time. And that's true, guys. So the restitution in this case would be the amount of um, your loan that you received. And then in addition to that, the amount that the government feels as though you hurt the U.S. government. And remember, that is at the judge's discretion. OK, remember, your time is also based on the judge's discretion. OK. All righty. So somebody said, glad I only claim to myself an editor. All right. Um, somebody said, government set y'all up to grab your hand in the cookie jar. No, the government didn't set nobody up, guys. This was the opportunity for us to operate off the honor system. You guys have to understand, back in the day, business was done off a of verb. This is why people say, y'all... Y'all were no good. You not trustworthy. You you ain't you don't have no balls because back in the day, your word, your mouth, what you said was all you had to stand on. Like you had to back up what you say. If you say you was going to do this, you were going to do this, right? That's that honor system, and that's what the government wanted from you guys. They wanted you guys to complete the applications accurately. They didn't want people coming and frauding people, and this is why it's so disappointing because you guys don't understand the amount of work that went into getting the programs up and them forms and applications them government agencies worked overnight for weeks and weeks and years to make sure that you guys had the funding and just from an accounting standpoint we were beat trying to complete applications read every policy figure out all of the forms so for y'all to take advantage like it hurts because even me and my team we were stressed 
We had to, I had to read so much. It was crazy. And so I had to read enough to make sure my clients can qualify, get the paperwork, documentation. When I tell you, we worked overtime. And so I can imagine what the SBA and all of them did to get those programs to you guys. They worked. It wasn't no, they they hit a Mark Zuckerberg building Facebook mode. It was working all night, 24-7. <laughs> okay. So um, somebody said, government said, y'all, okay, my hubby was just saying how that the whole thing and the ERC money was a setup. So remember, I responded to that. I don't think it was a setup. Um, somebody said, Biden is pure ridiculous. Scratch my head. Like WTF, all of this going on that has enough to be worried. So yes, I understand that. Like, do we really have time for that? And then somebody said, he need to focus on this. This was fraud. I did report. And see, this is, was one of my concerns that people that you know of is going to report you guys. And I'm not going to show this person's name, but this person said this was fraud. I did report some people. I knew that committed PPP fraud. He can work on both. So people that you knew, your best friend, your cousin, your uncle is pro had probably snitched on you already and you didn't even know. Some of you guys have already been snitched on by somebody else that was hating on you or mad at you because you stunned on them or whatever. You try to act like you were better than them because they didn't do it or, or didn't qualify. Whatever the case may be, people snitching. But I warned y'all about that. Somebody said, okay, let me go back up. So Chandra said, y'all can... Okay, no, we read that one. We read that one. Okay, so Tommy said... Don't use race just because a lot of black people got the load. That's what I'm saying, Tommy. Don't don't even do the race thing, right? <laughs> I'm not fooling with y'all. Tommy said, don't do the race thing. Hold on. Tommy said, they arrest the every, every color. They really are, guys. It's no particular. It's not a white, black, gray, Hispanic thing. It's all about paperwork, guys. Okay? Um, Tommy said they expected fraud, but not this much. Right. This was too much. You guys took it too far. Back then, your word was, yep, word, thank you. Word was bond. That's what it was. Thank you for that, Tommy. Back in the day, your word was bond, meaning what you say is what you were supposed to deliver. Like, we all we had was a trust process. And see, when one thing, I can I be honest? A lot of business start off with less policies. And as y'all dupe us, that's when the policies come up. That's when there's no more handshake business. That's when you got to sign a contract before I do your taxes. I remember back in the day, I used to have people just drop all their taxes. I do everything. Oh, I'm coming back for last year and all of them will come back. And then they'll be shopping around. So now guess what? Most of us don't just do tax returns without getting a 50% payment. I know I don't. I'm not touching nobody's taxes if you haven't been a client of mine for 15, 20 years without a payment. I'm not because y'all word is not bond. Thank you for that, Tommy. I really appreciate that. Okay, Tommy said, now your word is your bill bond. Oh, yes, your word is your bills bond, guys. Um, so any questions at all, guys, at all about um all of this PPP stuff? And I've already asked my team to go ahead on and compile all of my PPP. I tried, look, guys, I'm not the YouTube expert, okay? My team does that. But before um Tonight's live stream, I try to go and create a YouTube playlist. It's hard. It's not just set up a playlist. And I had the videos like I thought it was, guys. It's kind of technical, so I really don't have the time to try to figure out something that my team is already knowing how to do. So I'm going to have my team create a PPP playlist on my YouTube, which is for Lashaday TV. So you guys can head over to my YouTube channel and um, end up watching all of those videos. And you guys will see I every step of the way from the application process. I told you what the scammers were going to have you to do. I told you guys what not to do. I told you guys what type of case fraud cases for criminal charges that could be brought up against you guys. When they start investigating you guys, I begged you guys. I told you what documents they would be looking at and auditing every year if you got the PPP. I told you guys they was going to look at your tax returns, look at your bank statements and, and request things. And as you guys can see, they are subpoenaing in banks. They are subpoenaing in um, uh, third parties. 
um, it's proof in the pot and they've been doing it for since 2020. It's just the fact that it's over 5,000 plus banks that have gotten into the fraud that it's just, how many workers is it really at the Department of Justice, right? How many people, right? It's not, it's quite a bit, but <laughs> not as many to all the 3.7 million um, uh, uh, applications, okay? And we can actually, I think I might go into this another, like, because there's so much content in this document that I know you guys will want to know. Oh my gosh. They talk about everything that how the numbers are tight. Oh my gosh, y'all. Okay. They even going after the nonprofits. They was like the nonprofits had done some shady stuff, y'all. They go after the churches that are nonprofits. Oh my gosh, no one is safe, okay? No one is safe at this moment. Uh uh, nationwide. I'm gonna uh uh. Mm mm. Mm mm. Okay, guys. So, do you guys have any questions before I get out of here? So Tommy says the Department of Justice website has hundreds of arrests and convictions. Yes, they do. They do. They have so many. They wasn't trying to hear that. They thought you was just hating on them. Come, yep, they thought I was hating big time. Y'all thought I was hating on y'all. Let me tell y'all something. I want y'all to get rich. I want y'all to be happy. I want y'all to be gospel. I want you guys to have the most amazing life, but I want y'all to do it the right way. I don't want you guys to have sleepless nights. I want you guys to sleep peacefully with your money. That's what I want. I never wanted you guys to get loans and have to worry about how you're going to pay it back. Did you do it right? No. If we're going to get money over here, we're getting it the right way. we coming up legally. we coming up the right way. That's why I teach you guys about tax strategies the right way. Okay? That's why I don't sugarcoat with my tax strategies. I tell you guys, oh, you're missing something. You got to do this. So you can't just deduct that. And I try not to do clickbait with my content as well. And that's another thing I'm finding. You guys are falling prey to people's clickbait, which is just their marketing. And I know we got to have that little 60 second little reel to track you guys, but you got to dig deeper. Is this person an expert? You know? <laughs> Tommy, you killing me. Tommy says too late. They looking through the blinds now. Yeah, guys, they, you guys are really looking through the blinds. Um, so let me go ahead on. Give me one second, and then we about to close out. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So just to give you some context, so you guys can know that the um. Department of Justice, they're actually actively working. So this is a recent case that was just posted. Six individuals charged in connection with $7.5 million multi-state PPP fraud scheme. This is what, January 16th, 2024. They're working. And this is the Massachusetts. And they have all of the people's names listed. This is embarrassing. Wallace Ford, Andiana, Perry, the people's names are listed. Okay. So we can, yeah, we can search PPP. Okay. And these are all like within the past like year. And these are just cases that they were able to close. These are not pending investigations. These are the ones that's actually public, okay? And if you guys go back to some of my videos on Insta, um, on my YouTube, you will see that they even arrested a few people that only had um, $20,000 in PPP funding. Some people only had um, 50000 It wasn't just they were going after the people that did millions of dollars. They were going after people with different amounts. And so this is ongoing, guys, okay? 
And let me take the um okay. And then last but not least, guys, um, I just want to tell you guys to be very mindful. Um okay, so Tommy says, What about the ones that pay five thousand dollars to get it done, but on the hook for the whole? So they will be on the hook for the whole twenty thousand eight thirty-three. Now, if you had somebody do your application and they did it fraudulently, I would snitch, um, you know, growing, growing up, you know, you know, where you don't want to snitch on people and stuff. Right. But if you knew you really ain't know and that person really did throw some stuff on there, you know, they responsible a little bit, too. Right. Mm. I would be prepared to send over that information too. Hey, um, can I get a lower sentence? Can we work together if I give you the person to help, you know, do the application for me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I will be thinking. Okay. What about the ones? Yeah, I will be um uh, yeah, I do think they're gonna extend the statute of limitations again. And the reason why I think that is because there's no statute of limitations for tax fraud. And so they're going to use, I think they're going to use the grounds that, oh my goodness, if they committed tax fraud and there's no statute of limitations for that, then it should all, because the PPP and the EIDL was in conjunction to the tax return, then it should be also no statute of limitations. I don't think that they've thought of that thus far. So you guys are also hearing that here first. That right now they've only extended it for 10 years, but I personally don't think they realize that when you commit tax fraud, there's no statute of limitations. And so I don't think that they connected the dots. Oh, well, since they use a tax return to do the fraud, that there should also be no statutory limitations for this as well. So I think that's the grounds um, that they're going to utilize to be able to extend this for more than the next 15 years. This is going to be ongoing for the next 10 to 15 years. Now, if Trump come into office with a different initiative and try to uh, prevent the government from, you know, doing this, then, hey, y'all might be good. That's why I say, go ahead on and pray, y'all, you know, pray. Um, but... I think it's only so much he can possibly do since it's already an ongoing investigation and funding already applied. And I don't think he'll really be able to stop it if Trump did come into office. Okay. Um, I know I sound like a crook trying to get information, but I didn't get one live out loud. No, no, no. You don't sound like a crook that's trying to get information. No, no, no. You don't sound like a crook that's trying to get information. Okay, guys. So um if you guys have any questions, any concerns at all before I head out, I am so tired. Um, you know, this type of information, it drains me. Um, you guys may think creating content is easy and stuff. When you're connected to this type of stuff, distress stuff, and the fact that your future is on the line, it is very stressful on my spirit. Like, it's very stressful because I, I warned you guys. And I'm just mad because this impacts your children now. And we don't know what the outcome may be. You know, every judge have the right to give you guys the max. And we don't know if when your time come, if they're going to give you the max. You understand? Um, and I just hope that, you know, we realize, and I said this before in one of my live streams the other day like three weeks ago, I think, when I said that when are we as Black people going to realize that, I, this is just my personal opinion, I feel like God don't want us to scam, especially not extensively. He want us, we're so powerful, we're so strong, we're so amazing, we're so, and we can do it all, guys. Um, I don't think he want us to scam. I think he just want us to put our foots on the ground and put our head down and work hard for everything that we get. Because if it seemed like every time a black, the black community get hip into a program or something, it just seemed like we just end up screwed. Like with the housing market, so many black people got screwed. 
And then now with this PPP and EIDL, guys, it just don't seem like it's in our best interest to do any of this scam and stuff. It just seems like God just wants us to just do the right thing. And so I just want to leave you guys with this. When you take shortcuts, you will have to spin the block again. Meaning, when you take shortcuts to get money, build a business, you're going to have to start all over again. It's no... Um, easy route out. And it's no get rich quick scheme. Um, I wish you guys would have listened to me over the course of these past few years. A lot of you wouldn't have invested so much money into bad coaching and bad businesses and have done so much scams. But because I'm not going to show you my house, I'm not, I don't have an, uh, a Bentley. I'm not toting, you know what I mean? Money and faking like I'm in the bank with drawing 10, 15 stacks. Y'all didn't listen to me. And you guys have to understand that it's not smart to toot your horn. If you guys cannot believe based on my track record and my results, then that's where the issue comes to place. Why should we have to go and do defective marketing, deceptive marketing, lifestyle marketing for you guys to pay attention? I don't want to have to show you guys my house. I have a little regular single family house that I got when I was 25 years old. I've, I've already had a house before a lot of these scammers, like, but we're not going to see that. I'm not going to show you my truck and my car. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to show you I bought a new Louis Vuitton bag or I have this much money saved. I'm not going to do that for you guys to believe that I make what I make or I'm established or I know what I'm talking about. But one thing I want you guys to understand is that when I come in here and talk, I'm talking from experience, from the truth, from pure honesty. I don't benefit when you guys scam. I lose when you guys scam because now there's another small business that I may not be able to provide accounting services for down the line. Your family lose when you scam because that's another opportunity for us not to be able to build generational wealth. Guys, this time was our time to really flip things, not flip the PPP loans, but flip the system in its head. This was our time for, put, for us to put our head down, our feet on the ground and build successful, profitable, scalable and sustainable businesses. But what did you guys do? You use that time during COVID to BS, travel, get the loans, don't do right, and, and, and scam, get all this money, and then now you have nothing to show for it. And a lot of you have even gotten unemployment. Like, y'all jobs will be firing y'all soon. Like, do y'all not understand that the moment this employment fraud come up, see, because the states are coming too that you will automatically, more than likely, 90% of the time, will 90% of the time, whoever get caught up with this unemployment scam will lose their job. So forget about federal benefits at the moment and state benefits. You might immediately lose your job because your job will know because they will be informed because they're going to request the time that you work with them. When you guys submit for unemployment, see, this is, again, y'all don't understand how the system works. And I warn y'all, everything connects. If you guys check out my book, Audit Proof, you will see everything connects. Everything connects. Okay? So when you guys submitted those unemployment claims, what you guys didn't realize was that eventually your job will have to verify your time of employment. So they will ask your job, and it's not just the job that you're on. They end up sending it to multiple jobs that you've worked at and ask us, did this person work with you during this time frame? And they will give you a certain time frame. They will say one year, two years, this quarter, this month, whatever period they want. And then we're supposed to say yes. And then they say, okay, if yes, Please tell us um, the amount of hours and the amount of wages that you paid them. And so right off the bat, your job will have to write that in and send it to unemployment. So then unemployment is now going to connect that to the claims that was made under your social security number with the time frame that you requested the funding and that you said that you were unemployment in conjunction with the employment report that your jobs just gave them. 
So eventually the states are going to connect the dots as well. But you guys are going to lose your jobs. You guys are going to, and like this is just coming to a forehead and I just wish that I could just rewind the time and, and, um, <laughs> and start all over for you guys. And have y'all watch each and one of my video like we're in class. This is fraud. Don't do this. This is a scam. Don't fall for it. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't, don't, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, that's basically it. Um, do you guys have any questions, any concerns, or anything before I go? I'm winding down. The jet lag is still kicking in. I'm tired. Um, so, do you guys have any questions? Um, like, even my eyes looking, feeling like it's blurry. I think too much reading too. I didn't have my glasses on. Um, so do you guys have any questions or any concerns? Or do you feel like I missed anything in today's live stream? Um, please let me know before I leave. I got like one or two minutes. Hmm? Any questions, any concerns? Or do you feel like I missed out on anything on this live stream? We good? All right, guys. I love you guys so much. I hope that, you know, like I ask you guys, please go and pray to your God because he's he's miraculous now. OK, I can't pray for you guys individually, but I will definitely pray for you guys um, and hope that the system stop. But, you know, y'all individuals have to do your own prayers as well. Um, but do me one favor, guys, when you file this tax return, this year's tax return. Please file it correctly. Please file it correctly. If you if you if you know you didn't take if you didn't pay for that expense, don't claim it. If you know you didn't make money in that business, and see, this is where the problem comes. See, a lot of you guys didn't realize that when you increase your business revenue on your tax return, you committed fraud. So don't just go and throw income on there. Say you made 50000 and you know you only made 20000 That's fraud. Okay? Um, file your tax returns correctly. And don't just take frivolous tax strategies as well, guys. We're not in that landscape anymore. We actually stopped it in 2019. Because if you go, go back to my content from 2019, I begged y'all before the COVID happened. To let's get our paperwork in order. Let's just do things right. Let's prepare for unforeseen. And I, I also predicted the COVID. I said, guys, something is going to happen. We have to prepare for unforeseen circumstances. Go back to my content. We have to prepare for unforeseen circumstances. We have to prepare for... That's what I kept saying like a year before COVID hit. Come to find out when COVID hit, I said, guys, go back. I've been preparing you guys for, un, for unforeseen circumstances. Do you have your paperwork in order? Because if you do, you're good. If you listen, you rocking it. Go apply for your PPP. Go get your funding so you can keep your business open. And the people that listened to me, they were able to apply for their PPPs. Everything was legit because they was tracking their stuff. They hired their bookkeepers. They were doing things right. The people that didn't listen, y'all were scrambling. And y'all the ones that fell prey to the internet scammers. Guys. A lot of people are not for you. A lot of people are, have their own personal agenda. And one thing I can say that God always told me that my money is going to come when I serve you guys. I can't, I can't cheat y'all. I can't cheat the system. I just can't do it. I've never been that type of person that can, I always felt like I'll get in trouble first. Like I'll get caught up first. Okay. So yeah, guys, I wish you guys the absolute best. I will try to do my other content. I'll probably see you guys tomorrow because I have some other content that I want to talk about finishing up from our 2024 updates. OK, um, so I'll come and finish part two. And I think I have a part three of that because it was so many additional and new tax credits and strategies and things um, for this upcoming year. That was great. Um, they're temporary, but they're great. We always take advantage of them. Um, and that's basically it, guys. I love you guys so much. I wish you guys the absolute best. Get on your knees and pray and make sure you do everything right going forward, guys. And if you want me to file your taxes or if you want me to be your accountant or represent you in an audit or anything, head over to my link tree in my bios 
and click the link. It says, I want you to file my taxes. I want you to be my accountant. I want you to do my bookkeeper, be my bookkeeper, whatever service you want me to offer um, for me and my team. Um, click it, get on my calendar so you can speak with me so we can get you guys on the right track. And hopefully I can't, I can't backtrack now. Whatever the hell you didn't done, you, you didn't done. We now need to do the right thing going forward, guys. I love you guys so much. I wish you guys the absolute best and let's stop cheating the system because it seemed like everybody about to get snatched up now. And it's only going to be with the, what does it survive with the fittest now? And see, this is where it gets scary, guys. And have y'all even thought about this? Y'all know I'm a little conspiracy theorist a little bit. You got a lot of people dying from the vax. And then now you got a lot of people that's about to go to jail and on probation, lose jobs, lose benefits because of the COVID funding. So just with COVID alone, millions of people financially and physically are being wiped out because of decisions making. And I'm going to be honest, guys, I am unvaxxed. I didn't get the vaccine and I didn't cheat on my PPP or EID applications and I didn't cheat for my clients. So these two situations doesn't impact me. But have any of you guys thought about that? That the people that got the vaccine are dying and the people that cheated the system, financial systems are being put on probation and being prosecuted and possibly going to lose some of their freedom. Do y'all realize that? Because of the decisions that you guys made during the pandemic, and I attempted to warn each and every one of you guys diligently, um, you didn't eat the rainbow good. So guys, I love you guys. Please, if you know a friend that got the PPP or anything, send them to this video. Um, a few attorney sites basically was saying that if you didn't get the PPP over $100,000 fraudulently, they can't even help you. Um, and because it's so many cases, they're saying that they can't even take small cases. Like if you go to a few attorney sites that's doing the PPP frauds, they already said they can't even take any more cases. If it's not under hundred thousand, if it's not over a hundred thousand, they can't work with you. So they are getting overworked as well. Okay, I don't know what to say, guys. This is what you guys got yourself into, and I tried to warn y'all. So. Alrighty, guys. I love you guys. I will see you on my next live, live, live stream. Thank you for tuning in to The Money Zone, your source for all of your personal and business financial tips and all of the tax strategy that you need to pay little to no taxes. Make sure you tune in to next week's episode because we always have the best guests and give you guys the best strategy to implement during your financial journey.